Okay guys, welcome to another video. Today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be testing the auxiliary fuel injectors. Injectors, I can't even speak right now. This is a speed performance uh, secondary fuel injection kit, which is also known as a sixth part auxiliary fuel injection kit. And their kit comes with um, two 1000cc injectors from Bosch. Part number is right there, 02801580040. So what we're gonna be doing is testing the spray pattern on these things, as well as to see if they're leaking while they're closed, as well as to determine what the minimum pulse width is before they just don't even open. Now, the reason I wanna test all this stuff is because these things have not been doing anything. They've been closed and just sitting stagnant since August of 2019 when I blew the engine on the dyno. So before we go ahead and start turning the power up on the, the new setup with six port, uh, I just wanna make sure that these injectors are in tip top shape and they're not gonna cause us any problems. So in order for us to actually check the spray pattern and stuff like that, we have to upload a fuel map to the split second controller, which allows us to pulse the injectors while the engine is running at idle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upload a fuel map to the split second controller uh, that allows us to pulse them at idle. And then I'll take the connectors here for the auxiliary fuel injectors and I will simply just make electrical contact with each of them and then we'll spray them into a empty peanut jar right here. A nice, clear, transparent, empty peanut jar so we can get a look at the spray pattern and we can also see what the minimum pulse width is because with every injector, there's gonna be a minimum pulse width that the injector needs to run because if you run any less than that, the injector might not even open at all. So that's what I wanna determine with these. I wanna see how low I can go with milliseconds before the injectors just don't even open. That way I know that when I'm tuning the car, and adjusting the fuel map on here, I can determine exactly what pulse widths to stay away from. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, upload a fuel map, and then we'll start testing some stuff. All right, so I've already got the four Phillips screws removed here on the split second controller. So I'm just gonna pop off this lid. If you take a look inside, you can see that this is the connector that we're gonna be plugging into to connect our laptop. But it's got a lot of this protective stuff here. This, um, I don't really know what this stuff's called, but uh, the circuit board's kind of buried in there and this stuff protects it from moisture and water and whatnot. So pretty cool to see that, but um, I guess it's because they figured that these things might be mounted in engine bays and stuff like that, so they'd want to protect it. So what I'll do is I'll connect my laptop to this connector here and upload a fuel map. You can see you got the uh, RPM on the Y axis, and you've got the MAF voltage on the X axis. You'll see that it starts at 0 0.6 volts, goes all the way up to about 1.6 volts, and that's pretty much where we're gonna be at idle. And our RPM is gonna be obviously low. So as soon as we plug those injectors in, it should pulse at three milliseconds. That's pretty much exactly how the split second controller works, guys. This is the fuel map. You've got your MAF voltage on the X axis and you've got your RPM on the Y axis. RPM is actually determined by the ignition coils. It's a plug and play harness, right? From speed performance and the split second controller gets an input from those coils and that's how it determines the RPM. And it gets the another input from the MAF voltage wire, right? So it's pretty simple. We're just increasing auxiliary fueling with this fuel map here and we're reducing fueling from the stock system, stock fuel system. It's as simple as it gets. Okay, so I think it just finished flashing right now. So what we can do now is we, actually, we can actually run the car and then we can plug these injectors in while the car's running and uh, see how the spray pattern looks. Now we can't monitor fuel pressure because I've disconnected the sensor, right? second here I think that one's leaking yeah 
slowly. Huh, interesting. Well, let's pulse them and let's see how the spray pattern looks. That one looks like it's pretty good though. The spray pattern looks okay. Let's check the other one. This one here that we're about to test is the one that I noticed was leaking, but I think it might have just been because it was sitting stagnant for so long. The spray pattern looks pretty good. Check it out. All right, guys, so that was three milliseconds here. And we were playing around. That's the fuel. Um, the spray patterns look pretty good on both injectors, and both connectors were working. So that's a good sign. Now, the one that was leaking initially, when I initially primed the fuel system, it doesn't look like it's leaking anymore. You know? I think it was just because it was sitting stagnant for so long. That one looks good too. So, the injectors look pretty good. So I've changed it to two milliseconds now. We'll see if it fires. I'm pretty sure it will. But uh, we'll see how low we can go. I'll try one millisecond after this one. I just finished flashing the two millisecond map. Let's give it a shot at two milliseconds. Let's see how it looks. Uh-oh. Turn the engine off. Turn the engine off. Okay, so we had a little bit of a scare there. Uh, these injectors almost completely popped out because of all the fuel pressure. So I had to redo the zip ties. As you can see, the ignition is turned on and fuel is primed and they seem to be a little bit more stable in there. So let's give it a shot at two milliseconds. Looks good on that one. Let's check this one. Okay, cool. They look pretty good. Let's try one millisecond now. I'm gonna go turn the car off, we'll re-flash it. Oh wow, they're not even opening on one millisecond. Let's try the other one. Yeah, they're not even opening. Wow, one millisecond doesn't work, guys. No wonder I was getting a lean spot last year, or in 2019 when I was tuning this thing. All right, let's try 1.5 milliseconds. All right, one millisecond wasn't working. I just flashed 1.5 milliseconds. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, 1.5 works, but yeah, yeah, okay. Yep. All right, guys, so there we have it. We've got, uh, we figured out what the minimum pulse width is. Uh, we might have been able to go lower than 1.5 milliseconds, but you know what? There's no point in even testing it. One millisecond is a thousandth of a second, so it's obviously a very short span of time. So if one millisecond doesn't work, but 1.5 milliseconds does work, I think as a base, as a minimum pulse width on these injectors, I will probably run two milliseconds. And then we can just go higher from there. So, um, yeah, it is what it is, guys. You know, we have to uh, work with what we got. Luckily, the injector's not leaking anymore. So it was just because it was probably sitting stagnant for a little bit. Um, the spray pattern on both injectors looks pretty good and our minimum pulse width is going to be two milliseconds okay well anyways guys i'm going to put the car back together and um soon we will start tuning it so we'll uh see you in the next video take care guys